Hello again and welcome back to the Flying Style Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Mitchell, here with my co-host, Stephen Masley. Howdy, Matthew. And we are going to break right into week three. We've got a week three matchup coming up against the Washington Commanders, a divisional game. So, um, Masley, let's hear your thoughts. Uh, What do you want to get into first? This is more than a divisional game. This is playing against Carson Wentz. The guy who left us, the guy who thought was the MVP. However, however, Nick Foles led us to that Super Bowl. Nick Foles did it all. And it's time for his revenge game, so to speak. And it's a big matchup versus Washington. Going to Washington, that's probably be a home game for us, honestly. I don't really have fans. Um, I'm I'm feeling good coming off last week. And let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm I'm feeling you know similar to you. I don't know about all the uh, all the other nonsense you were talking about, but um, you know, uh, let's not disrespect Carson. He did lead us to that Super Bowl. I don't care if Nick Foles. I, I know Nick Foles won it for us. I don't not caring is a bad word, but this man led us to a 13 and 13 two record before he got hurt. Let's give him a little bit of respect. He but either way, either way, not we're, in our team getting- anymore. Only he's the only enemy side. You know, he's looking forward to this game. Um, you know, I don't think it's as much of a as an impact game as for Eagles fans as it is for Wentz. Uh, this is a bigger game for Wentz than it is for anybody else because it won't be a big game until Wentz comes into Philly. That one is going to be fun, but uh, but you know, it, you know, he's definitely obviously he's obviously got these marked on his calendar. He's definitely got these marked on his calendar. All right, so let, let's go right into the pressure situation. Who has more pressure for this game, Jalen or Carson? I say easily Jalen. Um, Why do you say obviously I know we just, we just mentioned, you know, the pressure situation for Carson, but you know, I just think that after this past week, uh, I think that, you know, not only did Hurts already have the pressure on him to, you know, prove himself, prove that he's improved and, you know, prove that he can be the franchise quarterback. And I think that most people are starting to, you know, relieve their questions of that and feel like they're we're safe and sound with Jalen Hurts. And that's 100% how I feel. I've felt that way since the beginning. Um, but I think that the fact that people are so hype on him now is going to uh, be a factor in his pressure. Like, I feel like, you know, he went from being, uh, in my mind, he went from being somebody that, like, a few weeks ago, people were, you know, calling for his head, and now people are chanting MVP for him. And I think the whole league is on notice right now. And I think that he has a lot of pressure to keep up his performance to prove where he's at. I actually think the complete opposite. I think it's that Jalen has faced enough adversity where he can, he he will be able to handle the pressure. He's been at Alabama. He's lost his like starting spot in the middle of the national championship game against Tatua. He went to Oklahoma, won the Heisman. I feel like he can put the pressure on his shoulders and he's been in this situation before. In college, I know he hasn't been at an MVP status level in NFL. However, I feel Carson has more to lose in this game just because this is like this is like his whole career in a bundle is coming back right now. It's oh Philly like got rid of you, drafted Jalen over you. Like it's it's he's looking down upon it as if oh like I have to he has to make a statement. Like if he wants to like give give the finger to the Philly fans like he has to make a statement this game and i don't think i think it'll it'll i think it'll get to his head a little bit if he doesn't do well like i if he doesn't play well i think it, he'll have a bad, worse season because of it um you see hold on though before you go anywhere else you answered two questions though you asked me who do you think has the most pressure you didn't you didn't say who do you think can handle the most pressure because if you're talking that i agree that hurts can absolutely handle the pressure but my, in my opinion, I think the pressure is more on him to be successful than Carson Wentz because a lot of people don't have a lot of faith in Carson Wentz. I think that Carson Wentz is much better than most fans think he is. Uh, I think that he's a solid quarterback. I always have. Um, but I don't I don't know. I think that the, the pressure to do well is more on Hurts than it is on Carson since fans really don't expect much from him anymore. Don't expect much and showing that he should expect more, I think, are two like it's two different standards. Because if he wants to show that he can be like MVP caliber player, where he he was like he was gonna win MVP if he finished out that season, in my humble opinion. He he was 100 percent And 
So if he wants to get back to a level where he's not getting written off, oh, you lo- you didn't make the playoffs because you lost to the Jags on the Colts, or you got kicked out of Philly because because you couldn't handle be- having a backup behind you, he's going to have to prove this game that and put the league on note. If he wants to even step up to a standard that I think he wants to be at, that like I know that I know Hertz has a lot of pressure on him, but he's he's already at the standard. Carson hasn't even got to the standard yet. So that's the reason I think that Carson has more pressure. I can agree with that. Um, you know, Carson's kind of on his last straw here. Um, I think that if he doesn't make his his tenure with the uh, commanders work, then he's probably going to, you know, diminish in the NFL. He's probably going to start fading out. Um, and like you said, with Hertz, that's probably not the case. Hertz has started to solidify himself. A lot of people would be interested in Hertz if he happened to not work out here somehow. Um, which obviously isn't going to happen at this point, but, you know, just hypothetically. Yeah. And, um, you know, but you're right. This is a, this is a high pressure situation for both quarterbacks in a few different ways. You know, obviously, like you said, with Wentz, um, Hertz going into this season was dealing with the pressure of, am I the starting quarterback? Am I the franchise quarterback? And now that he is kind of solidifying that through the first two games, which again, a long Long season, long season. But through the first two games, he's solidifying it. And now his pressure moves to, like I said, can he keep it up? Can he stay consistent? Is this real improvement or is this a flash in the pan? Yeah, no, I agree. However, this is a bigger matchup than just two quarterbacks. This is a divisional matchup, and we need to win this game, and we need to have a good record and vision in order to, for say, they to, somehow the Giants or somehow someone else keeps it up, that – you got to win this game and how we match up. I think Washington's defense is awful. I don't, I think the reason Carson's been doing so well is because he does have the second most passing yards in the league. However, the reason he has to, is because his defense is giving up so many points, forcing them to throw the ball down the field constantly. And I, he, they had a nice win over the Jags. That was a comeback win. And then they put up 27 points against the Lions, which I didn't. I don't think their defense is that great. And I think, but he's he needs he needed to do that, and he's going to still. I think he's going to need to do it against us too. But I don't. I don't think he'll be able to do it against us. I uh, he has a great receiving core with Terry McLaurin, Jahad Dotson, and Curtis Samuel, and that's no like that's that's a great receiving core, great young receiving core, okay. and. I just don't think Washington's defense is anything up the par for for us, and they they. I I think we're gonna demol- I think we're gonna demolish this defense. You know, um, I don't. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about this team yet. Um, they're uh, they're kind of a question mark because they're kind of a back and forth. Like you said, uh, their defense has been pretty atrocious so far. Um, the commanders are 29th in points allowed in the NFL and they are 24th in yards allowed in the NFL. So they're definitely giving up a lot of yards, a lot of points, uh, to some so far, not very great teams as well. Um, you know, they played, um, they played the Jaguars and who did they play last week? The Lions. The Lions. Okay. So they've played some okay teams, uh, nothing terrible, but you know, not, they haven't played any, you know, stellar, super stellar teams. Um, but on the other hand, they're also, um, one of the top offenses in the league right now, you know, they're, they're averaging 300 yards per game, 306.5, which is, um, second uh, passing yards. I, my apologies, 306.5 passing yards per game, which is second in the league. Um, and they're just moving the ball. Like you said, Carson's, um, second in the league in passing yards. They've got the young core, um, you know, it's I think that the key to this game is going to come down to the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Um, I'm not sure how how Reds, uh, I'm sorry, Commanders um, O line is. Sorry. It's going to it's it's going to be a habit for a long time. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's yeah, I, was but, um, <laughs> I, I don't know much about the Commanders O line, but I know that our D line has to step it up. Our front four haven't been getting there. Uh, they haven't been getting the pressure that we've wanted to see from them. They need to step it up this game and start getting to the quarterback. Because obviously, as you know, if we get pressure on Carson Wentz, 
he's going to make mistakes and he's going to rush the ball out and he's probably going to throw some picks. So we need to get pressure on him. And then on the other side of the ball, our offensive, they have a great defensive line. If they have anything on their team, their defensive line is stellar. They've got Montez Sweat. They have Chase Young not playing this game, obviously. Then they've got Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen as their front four, which is a great young front four. Um, our O line has to step up and keep them from getting to Jalen. We need to keep. We saw what happened with Jalen stepping up in the pocket and feeling comfortable in the pocket last week. We need to make him continue to feel comfortable because, especially early in the season, because if you get the quarterback worried right off the right off the bat, he's going to be frantic all season. And he's going to be running around. And, you know, I think last the first two weeks we've had a flip-flop. The first week I thought that we let too much pressure get to Hurts. But last week I think we did a much better job of letting him stay in the pocket and get comfortable. So we need to build off that. We need to build off last week, and we need to let Jalen start, you know, building his home in the pocket. You know, get comfortable. No, I agree. And I just – the only my, – my point is that their D-line is – they don't have big names. But they do. They are. They are decent players. Um, Jonathan Allen probably being their best. Montez Sweat, I thought was gonna be better out of college, but he hasn't shown much in the NFL. But I don't know. I disagree. I feel like every time we've played them in previous years, he's killed the Eagles. He has. He has. But he only has like four tackles this year total. I mean, he, he, he's. I just their defense has their defense hasn't looked good. Yet. Right, but I. You know, you know how I always feel about divisional games, and we've already mentioned that, but. I just think that these guys play a different way in divisional games, and I think that they're going to be chippy. No, so so building off of that, I think the only way that we were to lose this game is if we play down to them. I think we're a better team than them. I think we – it's but it's a divisional matchup, and if we, we just can't play down to their level, I think our offensive line is w- actually way better than their defensive line, and I think our D-line is way better than their offensive line. and. I think that there the guys do step up individual games for no like for not no reason, but it's because it's the bigger game and you're at a bigger stage and you have a rival. Like you just you remember the guy because you go against him twice a year and they've been there before and they, they don't like each other. You can't and it's if we play down to them, that's the only way I I see us losing this game. And you know, I, I don't I agree with you, but I don't really want to use the word play down to them. Uh I feel like they're just, you know, they're a young team, an inexperienced team for the most part. They're in a general, general rebuild stage, you know. Um, So, yes, they're a little young and inexperienced. Uh, We should definitely have the upper hand on them. Obviously, uh, we're favorites in this game. We I I've told you that I think our roster matches up great against anybody in the league. But um, building off of matchups, I do think that they match up pretty poorly against us. Um, you know, in terms of where they get most of their yards through the air, you know, we've got once again, Bradbury and Slay, we've got the safety help. Um, their O-line is relatively young. Uh, we should, uh, like I said, the key to the game is going to be getting to the quarterback. And I think that we should, I think that we should be getting to the quarterback. I think that we've been getting a little bit better throughout each game so far. So I think that what it's going to come down to for me is not not playing is not like playing down to them but sticking with our game plan and not letting them dictate the game plan if we play the way we did last week the aggressive defensive play calling the the running game setting up the passing game through the run uh getting using the middle of the field for the passing game doing those things the way we were doing it last week play our game Play to our strengths. I think that's the key to our entire season. We have a we have a team that like can be like played to their strengths very well. Um, we have players that can like set up certain things. Like you know, I've always said AJ Brown and Devontae Smith over the middle. Um, last week I saw AJ Brown probably get five slants over the middle for at least eight yards every time. You know, um, I just think it's going to come down to us sticking with our game plan. If we can run that game plan against teams and stick to it the way we did against the Vikings to every team, which is unlikely, but if we were to do it, I think we're Super Bowl contenders, if not champions. I don't want to go so far. 
But if we play that way all the time, we're going to be one of the best teams in the league. But my counterpoint to that is if we are like this stature of a contender, we have to beat teams. I think they're, I think Wash is no more than a seven win team. And I don't think they're very good. I maybe, maybe eight max. I don't, I don't think they're, I think they're a middle tier team, middle of the NFL. And if we want to be contenders, we have to compete with, like you have to kill. We have to kill the middle teams. We have to. We have to, sh- to stop our foot down and show who the big boy is. And like, so my keys of the game are: first off, get off to a hot start, and that's with any game. But establish a run. I want to see us go with Miles Sanders, and just, 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 just burn out their burn out that their defense. I wanted to see their defense huffing and puffing by halftime. I just want to. I just want us to pound, 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 and then go over the top. They're, I like it. I like it. Their their D backs aren't anything special, and I think I think AJ Brown's gonna have a great game this game. I think that if we can establish a run, I think I can see him catch something deep. I can see Kez going like I I don't see this is this is where like I I'm gonna say so, something stupid and it's gonna be completely wrong. Like I I don't see us losing this game. I don't. I honestly don't. See us losing this game. I can't. I. I. It, uh, gotta I'm knock on that. God, I still gotta I'm knock, knock it. I knock because because I'm gonna come out here cry next episode when we if we were to. But I don't see us losing this game. Our team is too good. Hurts is playing too well. And if we play, how? Oh my gosh, I was gonna say half as good as we played. If we play that first half, three quarters as good as we played against the Vikings, we're gonna kill this team. And I, I, t- I don't think Washington is good. I don't think they're good. I think Carson's, if we get pressure on him, like you said, we know how long he likes to hold the ball for and doesn't make decisions. And he, he, th- he, he all he can do is try to dip under tackles. So, like, murder him. Murder. Like, I said it with Kirk Cousins. They're, like, it's like a, it's just, he thought he can't, he can't move that well. Oh, gosh, I'm going to be so wrong looking back at this. I already know, but we're, we're. I just want to. I just want to. Mur- I just want to see Carson and just like throw three picks and like suck. I want to see him suck. I want to see him suffer. I want to uh, see I, the reason why we had it hurts over him. I don't want him here. No one wants him here. He's done. He hasn't been here. He's gone. Man, There's he, a reason he, he got hurt. The reason he's, he's gone out for here. a reason. See ya. He's gone for a reason. But I, I, I gotta disagree with you again. Actually, um, I agree that we should obviously beat this team. But I'm sticking by my roots, and I'm saying it's it's too early to be saying that we should be killing a team, any team in the NFL. It's too early to say anything about not only our team but any other team in the NFL. Like teams are gonna get off to to slow starts, hot starts, mid starts. You know, teams are gonna heat up throughout the season. They might get more injured. They might get more motivated. Things are gonna change throughout the season. At by no means until about week seven or week eight should I say we should be killing anybody because we really just don't know how these other teams are going to be yet. Trends are going to switch back and forth in the beginning of the year. Like they always do. And I agree absolutely that we should win this game. I think that we have a better roster, a more talented roster. Uh, We have more experience and based off the way these two teams have played in the first two weeks, we should yes, kill them. But I always go back to the divisional games. How often do we blow teams out in divisional games? Very, very rarely. Um, and you know, it's the beginning of the season. There's going to be bumps. We're not going to be perfect the way we were like last week. And we weren't perfect, but you know, it's not, not everything's going to be sunshines and daisies all the time. Things are going to go wrong. So I don't want to jump the gun yet. I I'm going to say that I think that we should definitely win this game, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So that being said, what's your score prediction? So my score prediction is, <laughs> gonna be fun um i'm gonna say 38 to 17 eagles i think we come out firing (laughs) this is such a philly hober take i don't like taking these why like i'm usually a logical guy that no we're gonna we're gonna come out firing i want to we're gonna come out score i i'm gonna cry we're gonna clip this and it's gonna make me upset we're gonna come out scorching hot (laughs) we're gonna i think we're gonna shut down carson and we're gonna we're gonna we're going to run away with it very quickly. And I want to see us in the second half 
just keep a pedal to the metal, unlike we did last game. And I think we win 38 okay. 17. I love it. I want to, I want to, I want at least a two touchdown victory. It's solid. I like it. Um, <laughs> I, I I don't there's I'm I'm struggling between uh, agreeing and disagreeing with you because there's a part of me that thinks yeah we're gonna absolutely blow them out we're gonna score over forty points but there's also a big part of me that thinks that it's gonna be a twenty four seventeen game and that's what I'm gonna call my prediction and I'm gonna say that we're gonna win this game twenty four seventeen I think it's gonna come down to the wire a lot closer than we'd like it to and it's gonna end with us running out the clock at the end of the game. Uh, that's just the way I see it. It's the way I, I, I tend to feel about most divisional games. And the Redskins, oh my gosh, how often am I going to do it, man? It's, the it's, commanders, it's, too, it's, too, it's hard. <laughs> I know. The Commanders, um, they, they always tend to have our number. I know we swept them last year, but uh, they just tend to have, have our number sometimes. So. Eight and two in the last ten games. That's true. All right, maybe I'm maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking too far of a, a back in in Eagles history here. No, I'll maybe play. I'm, I'll play double like, I'm thinking of a time. I'm think. I think I'm thinking of like you know like RG three times, early Kirk Cousin times. Yeah, no, where they were just like beating us every year. I guess it's kind of changed changed narrative in the past couple of years it's because they haven't really had a solid quarterback. And I mean. Carson Carson is I just I just I just think we have his number and I think what it'll come down to if it were to be a close game I think it's going to be more offensive than anything and I think our defense is too good to let up more than more than 28 points against this team and I think we could put up I think we could put up four touchdowns on this team so the reason I'm saying that much is because I believe in our defense just just I think I think our defense is very like very talented and I think we're going to finally Get pressure on Carson because we know we we've seen it. We just we just we know, know he can't Carson's handle the pressure. He can't that. handle the pressure, dude. Yeah, he can't handle the pressure. And I just I just can't see I just can't see us losing. And don't worry, man. I, if we lose this game, I'm gonna come on here just just so upset. But right now, I'm flying high, and I feel I feel fantastic about. Our yeah, chance to I, win this game. I I completely agree with you. I'm I'm feeling confident too. I think this is one that we should all feel pretty confident about. But do not sleep on the fact. I, I just I'm just gonna keep reiterating it to all Eagles fans listening out there. Just don't sleep on the fact that it is a revenge game for Carson. They they're walking into this game with people assuming that they're gonna lose. I, they're gonna play hard. I think I think that their offense. I you know like you said, you think that the defense is gonna stand up. I think our I think our defense might sit down a little bit. I think they might sit down a little bit. It'll be a little closer. So when you say deep, when I mention defense, I think not not our we play great. Like Maddox had a pick, Slay had two picks. Mm-hmm. I don't think our DBs will be that outstanding. We might. I hope we get a pick or two, but I think our D line will establish itself this game. I think I think our Hassan Reddick. I need to see him get a sack. I need to see him get a sack. I really need to see him get a sack. He's gonna get a sack. He is questionable for this week right now. I think he'll play. He probably will, but but I think I think I want to see. I've been trying to say it. I'm going to keep calling out Gannon. Can I please see Jordan Davis and Dean? I just want to see Dean, dude. I'm going to buy a Dean jersey. I just want him to play on the field. He doesn't. Gannon hates him. I really want to see a blitz from Dean and murder Carson on his butt. Ah, oh, that'd be great. That'd be <laughs> fantastic. Oh, I'm already dreaming. Oh, yeah. Carson. I'm Hard also excited for Dean, but you know, um, things tend to happen for a reason. You know, they're not playing him for no good reason. If he was, if he was good enough to be playing, he'd be playing right now. And I'm not saying he's not. I don't know what's going on in the organization or what's going on with him. It could be the injury, could be not knowing the plays well enough, could be not playing that well. Who knows? But you're right. I really do want to see more of him. I think that he has a lot to give. And obviously, Jordan Davis. We we know what to you know we know what to expect from him, and I'm excited to see more of him too. And one more point I'm going to make: um, this this Washington team doesn't really they haven't really had a chance to run the ball, but they don't they don't run it particularly well. Like the lead back Gibson had 28 yards in the first game, 58 yards in the second game against the Jaguars and the Lions. Like I, they're going to have to pass on us, and if we get pressure on Carson, they're not going to be able to do that. 
Well, those I, are you know, there's a reason that they're you know top top ten in in yards per game and throw over 300 passing yards per game so far. You know, because they're not yeah. running the ball. They can't. They can't run yeah. the ball because they're always down because their defense sucks and we're gonna murder them, Matthew. <laughs> I hope you're right, dude. But uh, with right, all dude. that, with all that being said, uh, let's jump into our weekly picks. Um, so this is being recorded before Thursday Night Football, and you picked the Steelers plus four, and I had the Browns minus four. A little head-to-head action. Um, getting your picks first. All right. Well, I'm going to start off my picks with uh, a relatively, I, I want to say easy one, but considering my, my luck this year, I, you know, hard to say. But I'm taking the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs over the Colts minus five and a half. Um, I, I think that should be an easy win the way they've been playing, the way the Colts have been playing. But, you know, football will be football. Um, will for be. my second pick, I'm going to go with the Ravens minus two and a half over the Patriots. Uh, I think the Ravens are pretty serious contenders this year. And, you know, I know they lost that game last week, but they put up a high powered offense defense kind of struggled in the end. You know, it is what it is, but I'm going to take the Ravens in that game minus two and a half. And then for my dog of the week, I'm going to go within the division here in the NFC East, and I'm going to take the Cowboys over the Giants. Um, the J- Cowboys are plus one in this game. The Giants are two and zero. Oh. I think people are a little bit too high on them right now. Um, I think they've played two relatively, um, not great teams and they've won by a field goal in both. I do. I don't think they should be favorites in this game. So I'm going to take the, the Cowboys here. You know, you believe in Cooper Rush? I mean, he didn't look bad last game. He didn't look, you know, he doesn't, he's not like, you know, like a studly starter or anything, but he didn't look bad. You know, I think that the Cowboys have a much better team than the Giants. And I think that Cooper Rush is good enough to take him there. No, that's that's respectful. So I'm going to go two games. I bounce back games for these two teams. And I'm going to take Cincinnati minus six over the New York Jets, who had a big game last week. They're playing in New York. And... I, I I expect more of the Cincy team, and I think their offense is going to explode this game. So they got to break go. out sooner or later. Yeah, they have to break out of their shell. The O line got to step up. And then for my second game, I'm going with a bounce back from the Las Vegas Raiders minus two points over the Tennessee Titans. That obviously looked so bad and last week against the Bills, but they're the Bills, and Bills are playing on fire right now. The Bills are so dominant right now. And my dog of the week is going to be one that's going to make me throw up a little bit in my mouth because I would never want to watch this game. It's going to be the Texans plus three over the Chicago Bears. I think the Bears are bad at football. And I don't I don't think I, I'll take the three points. I like I think Davis Mills isn't that bad and their defense is all right. I love it. Oh, man, that sounds a little risky to me. I love it. I love every. I love every. I, I also. Bit of it. I also tend to think the Bears aren't that great of a team, but they did just play hard against the Packers, and they did win against the 49ers. So, dude, don't sleep on them. Don't sleep on them too much. I'm sleeping. I'm. A, I'm asleep in my bed on the third floor of the Holiday Inn over there, actually, on Justin Fields and this Bears team. So, hey man, we'll see. We'll see this Sunday. We'll see. Maybe I'll get woken up. Maybe I'll get a little nudge. <laughs> But all right, there you have it. This is our uh, this is our review of the game this week. We're feeling pretty high and mighty. We like what we're seeing from the Eagles, and we're expecting to win this week. Uh, comment on the Instagram page what you think about this week, what you're expecting. Um, once again, I'm your host, Matt Mitchell, here with Stephen Masley. Go Birds, baby! We're murdering them. <laughs> Go Birds! <laughs> Let's get a W this week, and we'll see. I'll uh, see you for the. Uh, the preview next week.